Amen. Amen. Bless God. We are in our Sunday school time. Welcome to Life in Christ in the National Church. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. Before we get into the Sunday school lesson, I do want to thank everyone who had a desire to be a part of yesterday's youth uh, ministry outreach at Ackworth Beach. It rained. It rained so hard that it would scare the best of us. And so um, uh, the parents decided that, you know, that the rain was too much. But I was able to go um, after a few hours. The rain cleared up and the sun shined through. It was a beautiful time yesterday. Um, the beach was nice. Um, because it was on a lake, the water was uh, calm. Earlier during the day, um, it wasn't as many people, but of course, later in the afternoon, um, it started to get really crowded. But it was a nice experience. Um, one of the young men helped me with um, setting up um, our, our uh, beach area and everything and, and getting everything packed up. And so we thank God for the opportunity to celebrate our young people. We thank God even for the rain that tried to stop uh, the event. I, I, I've, the Lord has graced me to, to been in, be in ministry for some time. And, and what I've learned is that, um, <laughs> the only way to put it, the simplest way I believe to put it is, uh, Peter on the water and in the scripture. And, and that this is a whole another lesson, but, but it's, it's a teaching moment for us. It's, it's definitely a teaching moment in the scripture. Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come out on the water. And we know the story. The Lord bid him to come. Peter was began to walk on water. And then when things got tough and when things got difficult, Peter lost his faith and he began to sink. And at that time, he called out, Lord, God, help me. It happens. It happens. We it's easy to get uh, distracted. It's easy to take your eye off of God and off of the things of God. That's what the enemy's job is. But but being in missions for some time and understanding uh, the trickery uh, of, of, of the, the demonic forces and the demonic spirits, um, I, I, I've learned to... Um, discern because you know you're just not going to go out there um willy-nilly um by the spirit of god i've learned to discern to keep my hand in the master's hand and yesterday was one of those days you keep your hand in the master's hand and you get to where god has designed and you fulfill your divine plan and that you you fulfill, fulfill the divine plan and purpose of god and so I thank God for that experience. I thank God for that opportunity. Um, one of the mothers, she had uh, helped us uh, with our, our, our um, outreach yesterday. She she picked up the donations from Chick-fil-A from us. And uh, one of the things she said, and, and, and um, it, it stuck with my spirit, uh, the weather lies, the weather is is a liar. She said, and I understand that. And, and what stuck out with me is, um, <laughs> the world tells us knowing is half the battle. Amen. And so with that, we're going to go right into our Sunday school lesson this morning. The title of our Sunday school lesson is Micah's, um, uh, let, let's, let's go back a little bit. Micah stands for, uh, Micah stands firm for God. This is a perfect lesson. This is a timely lesson, especially with what we experienced yesterday in and with the weather. Um, one of the mothers, um, she was um, trying to make some extra money, so she wasn't able to bring her daughters. But in all of that, um, it was a teachable moment. In all of that, it was um, God showing us, regardless of what the weather looks like, he's still God. And it's up to us to choose to stand firm for God or to let the, the um, weather dictate our outcome. And so Micah stands firm for God. That's why this is such a timely lesson. And this resource that the Lord has graced us with is so, it's perfect for us. Um, 
because it helps us to not just learn about the Word of God, um, but it also helps us to apply the Word of God in the most uh, disheartening circumstances and situations. And so this morning in this lesson, we're going to get to see Micah, who stands firm for God. Never once uh, do I want to insinuate on any circumstance that it's easy. <laughs> it is not easy. You have to be quiet. Your spirit has to be quiet and you have to be able to discern what the Holy Ghost is saying, how the Holy Ghost is leading you. Um, and if you're consumed with the winds and the waves, you're, 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 you know, chances are you're going to miss it. And so our related scripture this morning for our lesson is coming from Amos chapter 7 verses 10 through 17, Second Chronicles chapter uh, 28 verses 8 through 15 and then um, uh, the book of James um, coming from uh, chapter 5 verses 1 through 9 and then Second uh, Peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. We know that um, our related scripture helps us to get the foundation of the lesson that our Sunday school uh, uh, is teaching us about. And so um, if you want to learn more about what Micah is ministering to us this morning, you can always go back to your related scripture and read and learn more. Our lesson text for this time in God's uh, presence is coming from Micah chapter 2 verses 4 through 11. We're going to read that in just a minute. This lesson this morning has two lesson outlines. Nothing to cling to, and we're going to read that in Micah chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. No one to believe, and we're going to read that in Micah chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. You all already heard me say this is a timely lesson. And so um, it, it enriches our soul, it enriches our walk and our relationship with the Lord, and enriches our walk and relationship with others. Our golden text, which we know helps set up the foundation of what our Sunday School lesson is going to teach us, is coming from Psalms 37, verse 18. We're going to read that. This morning, we're going to read our scripture. We're going to read what our Sunday School lesson is teaching us. We're going to recap. We're going to share our weekly announcements. We're going to close in prayer. That's what we're going to do in the next few minutes as the Lord leads us during this Sunday School lesson. That takes us into our golden text. As always, I encourage you to pick up your word. As always, I want you all to read the word of God. Even if you don't think it's doing anything for you, anytime you pick up a word and you read it, especially if you read it out loud, it shakes the earth realm on your behalf. And so with that, we're reading in my uh, Psalms, the 37th chapter and the 8th verse and it reads for us this morning the Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be for ever wow um this is what I want to say about that and this is just a personal note um this morning we're learning about Micah's stand for stands firm for God and our, our, our golden text reminds us that the upright their inheritance shall stand forever. For some reason, during our um, midweek Bible study, the Lord has had me for this year harp on reading the word and being in the word and how what we read in God's word and what we experience during uh, God's word, it's from a place of forever. And and to come to the scripture, Psalm 37, 18, which tells us, that, that, that the days of the upright and, and their inheritance shall stand forever. It reminds us that the word of God and who God is, how he operates, it stems from a place of forever. So if the Lord tells you no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rise up against you in judgment you shall condemn, <laughs> that word and the essence of where it comes from and who spoke it is eternal. If, if the Lord, if the word of God tells you what the enemy meant for harm, God uses it for good. <laughs> it, it, it stems from a place of forever. And no other entity that exists has that power, the power of eternity. Nobody but God. 
and 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 we walk in faith trusting that that what the lord um, um and his intention for us is for us to spend eternity with him in heaven and that's what his word does and that's what his spirit does and and we thank the lord for that this morning so this sets us up for where our sunday school our our sunday school lesson will, will lead us what our Sunday school lesson will help us to learn and glean this morning. It's a place, uh, the only way to explain it, it's a place that we mature into. It's a place that we grow into. What that means is that it still exists, even if you don't understand it. It still exists, even if you haven't grown into it. To clarify what I'm saying, you don't have to grow into it and for it in order for it to exist you don't have to mature in order for it to exist god existed before you matured um it just takes up some time to come into the fullness of god and the fullness of the things of god amen okay so that takes us into our lesson outlines our first lesson outline this morning is nothing to cling to micah 2 verse 4 through 7 we're going to read that our second lesson outline, no one to believe, Micah 2, verses 8 through 11. Can you imagine, and our, our lesson is really going to help us this morning, if you were in a situation, a tough situation like this, where you had nothing to cling to, where, you, where, where there was no one that you could believe, and and the the funny thing about it is sometimes, Depending on your faith level, depending on your walk and your relationship with the Lord, sometimes you get into those situations where there's nothing to cling to. And, and you get into those situations where there's no one to believe. Even yesterday, as we faced the weather, it was lightning and thundering. The rain was pouring down like I've never seen before. It was scary. I can imagine how looking at that rain and thinking oh this is it this is all god has for us today and so let's take a look let's see what our sunday school lesson teaches us about micah stands firm for god we're going to go right into our scripture reading pick up your word turn with me to micah chapter 2 starting at verse 4 out of the king james bible it says in that day shall one take up a parable against you and lamb it with a doleful limitation and say we be utterly spoiled he hath changed the portion of my people how hath he removed it from me turning away he hath divided our fields Verse 5, therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot and the congregation of the Lord. Verse 6, prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy, they shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. Verse 7, O oh, that thou art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? And so here we are. We're looking at um, the scripture that is what I call um, face to face. Um, your physical circumstances would seemingly dictate that God is not with you. God is not for you. God is not going to help you. Um, this is the end. Just doom, 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 doom. Just negative, negative, negative. And here in the scripture, there's question reminding them. Uh, as a matter of fact, verse says, is the, the spirit of the Lord a straightened? And, and, and these are questions. Are, are, are these um, his doings? These are questions. Do not uh, my words do good to him who, who walketh uprightly? These are questions. These are not statements declaring that this is who God is, declaring that this is what God does. This is like you're weebling and wobbling because of life, because of 
the, 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 the oppression that's on you or the opposition that's against you or the persecution. So let's take a look. Let's share. Let's see what our Sunday school lesson helps us to glean this morning. Our Sunday school lesson says in this chapter, Micah identified many of the sins of Judah, specifying violations of the Mosaic law. He did this to warn the people that God's divine punishment was on its way unless they changed directions immediately. They were so bad that they even devised evil plans while they were falling asleep at night and then carried out those ideas the next morning as soon as they had an opportunity. Among the things they did was covet and take fields and homes violently. In carrying out such injustices, they were oppressing their fellow men and taking away their promised heritage. God said, and that day shall one take up a parable against you and lamb it with a doleful lamentation. Those outside the land would make up a song to mock the people of Judah. At the same time, God's people would mourn with these words. We be utterly spoiled. He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. The time was coming when God would remove his blessings from his own people and would himself take away their property and give it to others. This is what our Sunday school lesson is helping us to understand about the life and circumstance and situation that the people are in, which is causing their faith to weeble wobble. Our Sunday school book says they would therefore no longer have any portion or allotment left to themselves in their land. Enemies would take it all and force them into captivity. Their prideful self-confidence would be utterly destroyed. Our Sunday school book reads the entire system of dividing up land among God's people was about to be destroyed. Our Sunday school book reads, we know the fulfillment of this statement would come about because the land was going to be controlled by enemies. The remnant of Israel would be left in the land, would have no authority for dividing it up. Um, uh, excuse me, for dividing it up. I lost my place. Okay. Anymore. So so they're losing their authority to divide up their own land because it's only a remnant. Um, the Sunday School book says, this is what Micah meant in saying there was going to be no one deciding boundaries in the congregation of the Lord. The parceling of land was soon going to be done by the Babylonians and those who remained in the vicinity who were enemies of Judah. What a hard place to be in. What a horrible place to be in. That's not what our Sunday school lesson reads, but I can imagine that place. Um, our Sunday school lesson reads, we see their presence in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. I love this lesson this morning. Our Sunday school book says, Micah was apparently quoting false prophets in the first part of the verse. Though it is likely that many of the people were also calling out for Micah to stop prophesying. This was an attack on Micah for his ministry of faithfully declaring the words of God to them. It was a forceful demand that Micah stop giving out the message he was proclaiming. The attitude from the false prophets was that the people of Judah were God's people as long as they continued to participate in worship rituals. God would not harm them. Our Sunday school book reads what they were ignoring was the fact that God wanted heartfelt worship, not just empty ritualistic worship. Going through certain motions did not satisfy God. Our Sunday school lesson reads, the last part of this verse is difficult to interpret. The Holman Old Testament com commentary offers some helpful information. 
The syntax and speakers are not easily clarified, but the purpose of the verse is clear. Micah and his supporters face a group of prophets, perhaps employed by the temple, who deny the doom and gloom of Micah. They continue to promise prosperity while Micah demands a new way of life or destruction. We must remember that just because we do not like a certain message from God does not mean it is not true. The only right way to live for God is by hearing and obeying his word, whether it agrees with our personal ideas or not. In a rather pointed implication, our Sunday school lesson reads, Micah addressed his audience as thou that art named the house of Judah. They were Jacob's descendants, but they certainly were not acting the way Jacob would have acted. While the false prophets were assuring the people that God would never move against them, Micah asked whether the spirit of God was restricted to any one line of activity. They were telling the people that just being God's chosen people was their security and that they had no reason to worry about God chastening and Micah's warning. In this, they were clinging to promises and ignoring warnings. It might be that their unbalanced message was coming from a flawed reading of Deuteronomy 26 verses 18 through 19. The people of Judah were forgetting that being God's children meant he would bless them if they obeyed and discipline them if they disobeyed, just as any human father would. God will always be just in how he deals with his children, including not overlooking their sin. God is a righteous God. And, and as we come into um, learning and growing um, more in God and, and the things of God, we realize that. There is a divine expectation. There is a divine standard. And God helps us to learn about it. And, and we pray for the courage and the wherewithal to, to, to walk out. As I, as I read the scripture and as I read what our Sunday school lesson teaches us, it reminds me that it's difficult to not walk and move with a crowd. It's difficult to take a stand that's opposite the popular belief and the popular way of doing things. It's, it's difficult. And this morning, our Sunday school lesson reminds us that Micah stands firm for God. It's not popular. The people don't like it. The people don't like what Micah is saying. But he stands firm for God. Even yesterday, and I keep harping on, on the weather challenge that we had in the spirit yesterday, it was easy to, to fold in and throw in the towel because of a little bit of rain and, and lightning and thunder. It was easy to trust the weather instead of trusting God. That, 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 that's our easy way out. But here, we're reminded that that... By the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, God calls us to take a stand in the most difficult circumstances, in the uh, unpopular, uh, uh, most unpopular situations. And the prayer is to have the courage and the wherewithal to stand firm for God, as we see Micah is doing here in the scriptures. Let's continue. So that covers our first lesson outline. And the first lesson outlined this morning was nothing to cling to. The temple prophets were, or false prophets were saying the very opposite of what God was telling Micah to declare. The people didn't like Micah. The people didn't like what Micah was, was saying, saying. And so we understand why our first lesson outlined was nothing to cling to. 
He wasn't being encouraged by the people. He wasn't being encouraged by, by you know, the norm. He had to stand firm on, on what God has said. In other words, the way that I take it, God was the only witness for 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 the assignment that 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 Micah had, and he remained faithful. And so let's take a look. Our second lesson outline: No one to believe. We pick up our second um, verses, our last and final verses, actually. Micah chapter two, verses eight through eleven. Again. Please read with me out of your Bibles. We're starting at verse 8. Verse 8 reads for us this morning. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with a garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. Verse 9. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children have ye taken away my glory forever. Verse 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Verse 11, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. I thank God for the face-to-faceness of, of this lesson. I thank God for helping us to see that even in difficult times and difficult situations where we're called to make difficult decisions, un- decisions that aren't uh, popular, um, we can trust and depend on, on the very essence and nature and character of God. So often, this is what I'll say, the arrogance of man. So often the arrogance of a of, 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 of man's title, even um, the work that they've done, cause them to overstep their boundaries and operate as if they are the authority, operate as if they are the creator. And, and, What's what's important to understand is through the power of the Holy Ghost, you've got to be able to discern that's not God. Yeah, that's a level of authority. Yeah, that's a title. Yeah, that's a position. Yeah, that's some work. But that is not God. You have to. And the only way to do it is to cultivate your walk and your relationship with the Lord. And and I'm I'm not upset. I'm not angry. You know, no, no. But God has uh, designed it so that we can discern who he is and what what his divine will and divine plan and divine purpose is for our lives. And if you live a life where you allow a title or position or somebody's work to dictate your life and dictate who God has called you to be and dictate who God has created you to be. You will live in bondage. You'll live oppressed. You'll live a horrible life. God has called us to greatness. God has called us to be free and live free, not to live a life yoked in bondage. And being able to have a walk in relationship with the Lord to be able to discern that is so very important. And here Micah is reminding the people, even though their hearts are hard and even though they they play a deaf ear to God and to the things of God, because as we see in the scripture, we're going to read it in just a minute out of the Sunday school lesson, they would prefer to listen to someone to tell them, drink wine and strong drink. They will accept that word quicker than they would accept a hard word from the Lord. So let's take a look. Let's see what our Sunday school lesson teaches us about no one to believe. Our Sunday school lesson says, it is God who is speaking from verse 7 through the end of the chapter in verse 8. He proceeds to enumerate some of the sins they were guilty of committing. The Lord accused them of robbing others of their robes. 
The victims are portrayed as people walking by feeling safe and secure. These might have been travelers innocently passing through their land. It is also uh, possible that this had reference to debtors having their garments confiscated because of their lack of payment. Exodus 22 verses 26 through 27 says, if thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by the sun goeth down, for that is his covering only. The Hebrew word, um, our Sunday school lesson reads, for pull off means to strip or unclothe. It is a word with military connotations describing typical actions of men of war against their victims or captives. A Sunday school lesson says it was bad enough to be cruel to the men, but those who were greedy were so obsessed that they also took advantage of the women and children. Perhaps it was from the widows that they exacted payments the women could not afford, causing them to lose their homes. Their homes were their only possessions. It was one of the most cruel and thoughtless actions that could have been taken against them. And it gives an accurate portrait of how far the people of Judah were from God's standards. Even the children were victims of cruelty, having their inheritance taken from them. Families were separated and displaced by the inability to maintain their lifestyles. And the children suffered tremendously from being taken into captivity. Micah described a hopeless situation being caused by those who lived self-serving lifestyles. This is rich and and. In no way do we think that, oh, we don't act like that today. Oh, we very much do act like that today. <laughs> um, and that's why we need God. Um, and, and the quicker we come to understand that God is the one that fixes us, the better off we and this world will be. The scripture says God had intended Israel's land to be a place of rest. If they had lived according to his word, the Lord desire would have been realized. The terms of the Palestinian covenant promised blessing and continuance in the land upon the sole ground of obedience. In case of disobedience, there was but one alternative exile. Micah therefore is pronouncing the breach of this covenant or its non-fulfillment and the exile which inevitably followed. Moses referred to Israel's rest before they crossed the Jordan River. Ye, for ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety. Since it was not truly a land of rest for the Jews, and since God was going to remove them from it, he encouraged his people through Micah to get up and get out of there. At the time of Micah's message, escape was possible for them. But if they did not leave immediately, they would experience the destruction of their land. They were putting their confidence in their own manner of living instead of what God wanted from them. They would soon find out the prophets had lied to them. Consider Feinberg's application of this. Those things that delude and are unstable satisfy the heart of the one who has turned a deaf ear to the word and revelation of God. Lord have mercy. When men turn from the truth, they do not occupy themselves with some higher substitute, but with downright fables. That is so rich. Um, and it reminds us this morning that it's important for us to be discerning. It's important for us to keep our hand in the Lord's hand. 
we don't know all the answers. Um, and, and it's important to remain connected, remain in relation to God and him alone because he knows all things. And, and it's his plan. It's his outcome. I thank God for this rich lesson this morning. Micah stands firm for God. This lesson reminds us that it's not easy to stand firm for God. The circumstances that you face, the people that you face. But God equips you. God uh, provides um, uh, an opportunity for you to stand firm for God. And the only way we do it is that we continue to cultivate a rich, a righteous, and holy relationship in and with God. That's how we get it. Our Sunday school lesson tells us that when men turn, and I have to reread this because this is so powerful. When men turn from the truth, they do not occupy themselves with some higher substitute, but with downright fables. So, we want to make sure that we don't turn from the truth, no matter how hard or how difficult the word of God may be. Now, I'm not talking about what your friends think. I'm not talking about what people say about you. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the very essence, the very nature, and the very character of God. And if you don't know what the essence and the nature and the character of God is, people will come and tell you anything and you'll be living your life under their authority, <laughs> under their misconceptions and wrongdoing and there is no substitute, a higher substitute for God. There is no substitute, a higher substitute for God or for the things of God. There is no higher substitute for God or for the things of God. Amen? And I'm going to stop right there. Of course, we altered how we're doing our Sunday school time. And so... This would be the time where we go into our questions and we go into our answers and we look at our photos to depict how um, it applies to, to what we learned. Our questions for our, our Sunday school lesson is in um, our Sunday school book. So I encourage you all to read your questions. Make sure you get the answers for your questions. It's important to have that, to know that you understood what the lesson was about. And, and it just, it, it enriches you. It, it helps you to um, get to a better place in God and the things of God. So this morning, I pray that this lesson touched you. I pray that the, the, the principles that, that we gleaned and learned in this lesson enrich your walk and your relationship with the Lord. And it helps you to be victorious. That's what this is about. God is teaching us and, and allowing his word to unfold to us so that when it's time to face life or when it's time to face those 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 tests of our faith, we get it right with God. We get it right in God. Amen. And so this morning we learned about Micah's stand firm for God. We were able to learn about nothing to cling to in popul unpopular uh, uh, decisions that you have to make that doesn't go uh, along with uh, the crowd or go along with what's popular. Uh, we were this morning able to learn about no one to believe, meaning that uh, the, the, the crowd is saying one thing, but God is telling you something totally different and you have to stand, even if it's not popular, even if uh, the crowd is not saying it, you have to stand for what the Lord has told you. I love this lesson. This lesson is a lifelong lesson. It, it's something that we can apply in our lives very much today. And so with that, this week, um, um, things are going to be a little quiet. <laughs> we got our, uh, our young people taken care of. We, we scheduled their, their celebration on, on Saturday. We did the Ackworth Beach thing, even though we had challenges with the weather. 
Um, so that was a good experience. I, I love that experience. The only thing that I missed about Ackworth Beach was at um, uh, the beaches uh, uh, at a regular beach because Ackworth Beach is actually man-made. At a regular beach, you experience the waves, and that's the only thing that that I missed. But but it was a good experience yesterday. We do have our back to school giveaway coming up. We want to be able to bless some families. That's going to be on Friday, August 5th um, at the offices. So we want to keep the parents in prayer. We know the young people um, get back into school and, and all that that goes along with that. So we want to pray for the parents. We want to pray for the kids. We want to pray for the school system. We want to pray for the teachers and all that comes along with that. And we're praying about our, our 2023 short-term mission, praying that the Lord would help us there um, and, and, and uh, clarify that and get, get all those things um, in order. Of course, every Thursday evening at 7.30, we do have our midweek Bible study. This month here at the church in the month of July, we're um, deeming this month of July as a month of freedom. So all month long for us here at the church, we're learning, we're gleaning as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about freedom. The enemy wants to put us in a chokehold. The enemy wants to keep his knee on our neck. The enemy wants to keep us shackled and in chains and oppressed and tethered and yoked. But in God and in the things of God, that is not so. And if you don't remove the enemy's chokehold, if you don't remove the enemy's knee from your neck, if you don't remove the yokes of bondage, that's not the life the Lord God has intended for you to live. So we thank God for this month of freedom. We thank God for being who he is, our creator. Man will come and try and say, you're this and you're that. And in some people, they start to believe what man said. But man is not my creator. Man is not your creator. That's why God has called us to operate in freedom. Freedom in God, freedom in the things of God, freedom in who God is and what God has declared. Amen. It's it's a rich time in the Lord. We thank God for this special time that he grants us. We thank God for our Sunday school time. We thank God for being able to fellowship during this Sunday school time. We thank God for our resource and the lessons that he presents to us that enrich our lives, that enrich our souls. And so this month, our end of month message will be on July 24th. So what that means is that at 10 a.m. we'll have our Sunday school time and then directly after that we'll go into our end of month worship. I want to, um, as a pastor, thank you all for your interest. Thank you all for, for participating. Jake, thank you for trying to befriend the work of the Lord and, and, and the assignment which God has entrusted. I pray that the Lord will continue to unfold his divine will and his divine plan and purpose for your life. You know what you've asked God for. You know uh, what you need. You, you know what you talk to God about. You know what's going on in your family life. You know what's going on in your business. You know what's going on. And so, so those things we bring before the Lord this morning. We pray a special blessing over our international pastors, Pastor John in India. Pastor Jan in, in Pakistan, uh, Pastor Ilmark and his family in, in uh, the Philippines, and uh, Pastor Milton in Costa Rica. May the Lord God continue to show the fullness of who he is in our lives. We thank him for it now. With that, we're going to go ahead and close this morning with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, Lord God. Father, what a rich lesson you provided for us this morning. Micah stands firm for God. Help us, oh God. It's so easy for us to fold to the things that are popular. It's so easy for us to fold when we're experiencing pressure against society. Help us, oh dear God, to stand firm for you. That strength, that wherewithal only comes from you. We honor you for it tonight, Lord God. We honor you for it this morning, Lord God. 
Continue to keep our hand in your hand. Continue to keep us covered and washed in your blood. Continue to order our footsteps, oh God. Continue to dispatch your angels to encamp about us on every hand and on every side and every area and every circumstance and situation. And for that, Lord God, we honor you. And for that, Lord God, we bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you back here Thursday evening for Midweek Bible Study.